so uh, this is the exercise on chapter two, right? Mm -hmm. uh, section 2.10, the exercise nine. And in the exercise nine, uh, we were asked, right, to uh, uh, use some of these graphics functions, right? The auto plot, GG uh, underscore season, so far ACF, whatever, to, you know, a couple of, uh, a couple of time series uh, that are included in the, you know, in the in the book. So I just chose two, but there's one that, you know, I I, I found I found that a little bit tricky, and and you will see you will see why. Mm -hmm. And it's the one on the you know on the Australian production uh, time series. It has a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of uh, let's call it the. Uh, items or objects or commodities, right? Yes, um, sir. Yeah, the, the original um, time series is called AUS underscore production. And this is what it looks like, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, which is uh, it's divided by quarter, right? That's the frequency every, every uh, three months. Then you have uh, uh, the beer, uh, you know, the, the, the beer supply, tobacco, bricks, etc. And we were asked just to select the bricks part, okay, from the, from the, uh, from this uh, global uh, time series. Yes. So my first, um, you know, my first take was then to select just the, you know, the index, which is the quarter, and then the bricks, right? Select quarter, select bricks. Okay, and I'm going to do that is just to show you, you know, what I, what I found next. Okay, I'm not going to apply the filter yet. Mm -hmm. okay? That's something that I have to, you know, do afterwards. So when we select that, we select, right, you know, we have the bricks, okay, the quarter and the bricks uh, production. Uh, then we do our auto plot, right? And we yes. get this nice, you know, time series plot. And you know, one of the things that we can see is that it has an upward trend, okay? As an upward trend, it has definitely has seasonality, okay? It has those, you know, up and downs, you know, that they kind of, you know, repeat every, every now and then. And then also we have kind of, you know, you know, large, you know, downturns and up, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so, uh, kind of interesting, you know, thing. And also we can notice that from the beginning of the time series to around, let's say 90, 1980, 82, et cetera, something happened that it doesn't, you know, keep the trend going. So I kind of, you know, kind of stabilize and then kind of down trends then, okay? I don't know if you agree with me there. Yeah, I agree so far. Okay. So then we were asked to uh, use that, that function, the GG season, uh, to check by year, right? To check, you know, mm -hmm. you know how are the, you know, the, the, the seasonality between years. So this one uh, gives me this, you know, kind of spaghetti uh, <laughs> plot, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Spaghetti plot. And, you know, you can see that most of the time, you know, depending on which one you pick, but most of the time they have like an upward trend, you know, from quarter, let's say quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and all of a sudden, after quarter three, then kind of it stabilizes. Some of them start to stabilize or downtrend at, at quarter two. Okay. And it's interesting that if you do, you know, the GG plot, plotly uh, here, okay, I, I don't have it, but, you know, it's, 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 it's not that, 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 that complicated. Uh, let's do this. Okay. Uh, GG one, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then GG plotly uh, G1, right? Yes. Um, okay, so here then you can, you know, with a tool tip, then you kind of, you know, make sure that you are in the right, you know, in the one that, that you want to pick, okay? Uh, okay, here, let me see if I can, okay, here we go. So in, it, it's interesting that because, uh, we notice, right, that trend going upward and then all of a sudden, you know, something happens in that area and then goes down. 
uh, you see that in this case, the, the, you know, the, the maximum uh, series is around 1981, okay? So it reached a peak in 1981, and then all these series around are between, you know, 1956 and then 2000, and supposedly 2010, okay? And that's one of the things that I, you know, <laughs> realized of what was going, what's going on. So what at least it gives you a little bit of, uh, you know, that, that there's an upward trend, and also there's some seasonality depending on the, on, on the years, on the group of years that you are, you know, that you are studying, okay? So then uh, the next plot is a uh, sub-series, okay? And that one what it gives us is the time series, but by the, you know, by each of the frequencies, right? So if we have quarters, we're going to have a time series for the first quarter only, you know, through the years, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. And as you can see, uh, this is the basically the, the mean, I believe, you know, mm -hmm. that blue line, the mean of the whole series. So you can see that quarter one is the lowest, you know, historically speaking. Then uh, uh, second quarter, okay, uh, uh, excuse me, fourth quarter, second quarter, and third quarter, which is the, the highest. And they all exhibit more or less, you know, the same, you know, the, the same pattern, right? You know, that they have a rise at the beginning of the series, then they kind of, you know, level off and then they go down. Okay. If you have anything else, let me know. <laughs> Not so far. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so they, then we go to the lags, right? And okay, so this is the lag, right? And this plot, what is telling us, I believe, you know, this is, this is a little bit confusing because of the lines, but uh, in the book, they suggest to do it with points. So with the G on point as an argument on GG at underscore lag, then you can see a little more clearly, you know, more of the tendency. So here, if you go back to the book in that chapter about the lags, what he's presenting is, you know, different lags, okay, lag one from lag nine, and then try to see which are the lags that are more, you know, more aligned, you know, through the diagonals, right? And in this case, I think that lag number one is pretty much aligned in all the, the quarters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we see that, for example, lag six, even though there's some quarters that are aligned, uh, some of them, for example, uh, Q1 and Q2, they start to you know drift uh, more, right? Uh, so uh, this one, you know, kind of we can be we can make sure that like one at least is is pretty much you know the, the, the graphically you can say that's pretty much the highest uh, correlated, and all of them has some degree of correlation, but they start uh, you know. Pe peeling, peeling down, uh, you know, that, that, that diagonal uh, measure. I don't see anything here that suggests that there is a negative uh, correlation because when it's negative, then it goes, you know, the other way, right? That's true. Okay? And in the example, we saw that in some cases they go positive and in some cases, well, they go uh, negative. But here, uh, at least I don't see uh, that pattern. Okay. Okay, then we go to the autocorrelation, right? The ACF. Okay. And here, what we can see is that, you know, some of the lags, right? Okay, comparing to the, to this plot, right? Uh, some of the lags clearly are, you know, they go like in a, in a, in a, in a scallop. Uh, they call it in the book the scallop pattern, right? They go mm -hmm. this way. Then, you know, uh, this section, this section here has the highest, right? The highest flag. But this point, lag one and lag four are the, are the highest. Then it goes back again, back again, back again, etc. Okay, so we can see that that pattern. And it's interesting that now we can associate the the first plot of the time series with the 
you know, with the resulting, uh, you know, or, or correlation. Uh, that, that's one of the, you know, that's one of the things that we have to, we have to match in exercise uh, 10. Okay, so I got a bit, a bit more curious and I say, wait a minute, I, I've seen in time series, I've seen this nice decomposition uh, plots, right? Where you have your observe, then you have the seasonality, you have the train and then you have the random. And I said, but you know, why doesn't appear here? And it's because, you know, it's the next chapter, chapter number okay. three, right? So what happened was that I, you know, got a little more adventures and I said, okay, you know, let's try to get the whole picture here because I'm just, I'm just seeing chunks of it. So let's try to see, you know, the whole thing in that, you know, in, in that, in that scheme, uh, you know, graphical scheme. So I, I did the, you know, a little bit digging on the chapter three and then I tried to decompose, right? The, the bricks, okay? The, 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 the seasonally trend and, and a random, uh, uh, models, uh, components. And what happened was that, boom, <laughs> I got an error, <laughs> okay? And the error says, promise already on their evaluation, recursive default argument reference or early problems with a question mark. And I said, what the heck is that error? <laughs> so what do you do when you get an error? Hey, you Google it, right? <laughs> Exactly. You Google it, yeah. you know, try to see, you know, if someone else has the same problem. And, and there was some discussion, especially from, from, the, from the book's author, uh, uh, Hangman. Uh, there was some discussion, but I really didn't understand it. So I said, but wait a minute. There is a way, okay, I, I put it in comments, but there is a way to get that decomposition without using these libraries. And it's because already R, you know, has built in as built-in time series uh, uh, functions, okay? So I did that study and what happened is, what happened is that, remember that brick, that filter that I didn't apply? Mm -hmm. What happened is that if you go like this, bricks, uh, excuse me, uh, bricks, right? Uh, let's take a, a view, right, of the whole, of the whole series. Okay, let's take a view. Okay, so you see that, you know, everything is fine. You know, you have the index, you have the, the numbers, etc. but look at the end. Ha, 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 ha. That there are nulls after 2005, uh, quarter, uh, third quarter of 2005. So okay. selecting is just remove, setting it an A, so not removing it. Exactly, exactly. So what, what, what happened, was that because this is a, a global, you know, it, it's a much larger time series. What happened is that, you know, everyone has to march at the same frequency, right? So apparently there are no numbers in the, in the original time series, there are no numbers for that particular uh, period, for bricks, okay? Maybe for other uh, commodities they are, but not for bricks. So what I said was, okay, because I only have two numbers for 2005, and I wanted a square, right? A square time series that I have the mm -hmm. same period, you know, for each for a year, each year. So what I did was then uh, add a filter. Okay, when I select the quarter and the bricks, I add a filter for a year that says, okay, take everything except the ones, you know, after two thousand five. Okay, so here we go. We add the filter, and now. Don't let, don't, don't let me down, right? And now we don't have that error. Okay, so if you stumble in that error, probably one of the causes probably is that there's some things around there. And it's very common in the real world in time series to have those gaps, okay? Sometimes they reflect as longs, sometimes they don't, okay? So you have to be a little bit more, you know, uh, cautious in this, you know, in, 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 your, in your analysis, in your, you know, preliminary analysis, right? So now that we have that, that function working, the STL, now we can you know, decompose the, the time series and now uh, we have our graph, okay? And from the graph, we have seen this, but now we can see it everything in one place, right? We have the observe at the, at, the, at the top. We have the trend, okay? Which is a trend that is upwards, then it gets a little bit you know, uh, level and then it goes down. Then we have the seasonality, right? 
okay, that mm -hmm. we, we know that it was present, but now we can see it very clearly. And then we have what is called the lamp or, or the noise uh, part of it. But that's going to be something that we're going to be discussing more in detail, I think, in chapter three. But it's something that it, it, it was kind of curious, but then, you know, it was kind of a learning, you know, learning uh, opportunity oh. there. <laughs> so the error messages, well, not only not informative, but completely misleading. I know. I mean, uh, they don't tell you anything about NAs, okay? Yeah. But yeah. NAs are the ones that are causing the problem because when you take them out, then everything, you know, is working. Yeah, exactly. Okay? So it, it took me, it took me about, uh, it took me about half an hour to figure that out. And I said, what? Well, <laughs> okay, so that's for the breaks part. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> so yeah, so I will um, share mine for it. So I've only done for the employment and breaks. Yeah. Yes, they are. Yeah. So I, I only did it for two, oh, okay? Yeah. I did it for the, the brakes and for the US gasoline. And, you know, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's 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 quite nice. I mean, it's, um, well, it I also need some time to refresh uh, my mind after, well, not touching the library and the book for two weeks now. But right, it's right. quite okay. So for the employment, so what I find interesting here is that, mm -hmm. well, I can clearly see the trend. The trend is quite strong. But then if we zoom in, so there is this cyclical pattern that is very short. Right. And, and so, but then if we look at the seasonality, then we don't see, well, I don't see anything. Everything is just a straight line. Mm -hmm. And if I look at the subseries plot, so the average of for every month throughout the years are all the same. So regardless of the time period within a year, everything is just the same. And we can see throughout the facets, we can see more or less the same pattern. And the pattern looks really, really similar, strikingly similar across the facets. So I find it quite surprising, actually. And then for everything is just positively correlated from like one to like nine for all of the seasons. And, and yeah, when I uh, uh, plot the autocorrelation, then we can uh, clearly see that there is the trend here. But then I'm just so curious. Okay, so what is um so this cyclical pattern that I'm seeing here, so I guess, yeah, yeah, now that you showed me the STL decomposition, I'm actually quite curious, okay, so what is the time period the cycle repeats? Because if I just use uh, the month, which is the default index here, then I don't see any, um, any cyclical pattern. So the trend is overwhelm the, overwhelming the overall change in the data. So, well, now that you showed me uh, how you analyze your data, then it led me to think, okay, maybe uh -huh. I should try week or maybe bi-weekly um, um, as the index. Because, right. yeah, I mean, if I just use the default plot that they have, then I, I can't really see any a cyclical pattern that I see very clearly here. So I'm right. just quite curious, okay, what am I doing wrong? But yeah, I should change the index next time. That's what I think. Yeah, I, I would recommend to change it to, uh, you know, uh, a lower frequency, for example, instead of months, for example, uh, yearly, okay? Mm -hmm. And maybe right. you, can see, you can see a certain, uh, you know, cycle, maybe, maybe. Okay, because that happened to me with the gasoline. In the gasoline, uh, if you if you if you transform it from monthly to to yearly, then you see that there's really no cycle. Just just an upper trend, and then boom, it goes down. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so you can okay. make sure that hey, you know, that there's no cycle. But here, probably there will be some kind of uh, you know, like, like a oscillation, you know, pattern like, like a wave, 
I good. Yeah, I, I, I like it. Is is this is this a shiny? Uh... Um, this is the uh, the new R Markdown, the Quad So oh yeah, it's exactly the same as R Markdown, but I would oh. say a bit cleaner. Oh yeah, very, very much. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I would like to check. You know that that uh, that, that that code. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Sure. And then for um, for question ten, then well, what we're doing is uh, basically matching yeah. uh, a pictures and picture. So. Right. Okay. Well, when I try to match this, um, mm -hmm. so I'm just using what I'm seeing here instead of trying to go into the uh, data itself. But right. it's just a bit difficult for me to start matching things. But then when I saw this, um, so there is this scallop pattern. So for the panel D, yes, there is the um, decreasing autocorrelation over time. But then we mm -hmm. see that there is a scallop, um, I think like for every year, maybe, yeah, it's 12, then it starts increasing again. Right. I'm actually thinking that maybe it matched to this one because it shows that, okay, there is an, in, there is an overall decreasing trend and we can also see like a scallop a pattern um, of, for every year. So I'm matching number three and D. Okay. That's what I think uh, with my uh, little bit uh, sort of random okay. guess. I can, I can tell you my answer. Yeah, sure. Okay. We are in the same frequency, 3D. <laughs> and, and guess what? Because I recognize the time series. This is a famous time series, the air passenger time series. What I did <laughs> oh, was just to okay. check, just to make sure they you know that everything is, is in order. I, I did the, the, the ACF, you know, from the time series. And yeah, it matches, it matches the, yeah. <laughs> okay. But as you can see now, we can see, for example, the same way that we did with the bricks, okay, that it had kind of that trend and in level and go down. But you see in that period of the of that strong, you know, upward trend, you see that scallop. So I say, okay, everything that more or less matches that pattern should behave the same, right? Should be that's true. So that, that gave me another, you know, uh, uh, clue, you know, to to make sure that I was choosing the right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so three and D, right? That's true. Okay, then uh, I, I did, uh, you know, I recognize the number three there, passengers, and also recognize the main trapping. The main trap is in the book, okay? It's, it's also in chapter two. And the main trap is, is the links, the links uh, series in the pelt, in the pelt, uh, you know, uh, 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 data set. And this one, when I did the, the ACF, it points me to C, four, points me to C. There was a little bit of, you know, very uh, fine, a fine grain between C and D. But the thing is that that one, the fourth, the the you know those pointy pointy lags, okay, from mm -hmm. you know from upward and you know downward and upward, they coincide with five, with ten, with fifteen. Okay, here it is just six, twelve, and eighteen. So you know every six, you know periods then you have that, you know, that up and down. In the, in the main trappings, okay, you have it uh, 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 around five, five periods. So for me, four is C, okay? Uh, uh, were, were you, did, did you choose the same? <laughs> yes, the same. <laughs> okay, good, 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 good. Okay, then those two, I tried to, you know, look it up. I couldn't find anything. <laughs> Okay, apparently, or they're in the book, or they're you know di different. But now, with this two, you know, that we have as reference, now we can you know uh, choose a little more wisely, right? So for me, uh, one, this one, right, goes one goes with B, okay, right. and two goes with A, yeah, okay, because of the way that you know the trend and everything, okay. 
So yeah, that, that, that was a good exercise, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it sort of forces me to imagine, okay, this is a time series plot, then how would the ETF right. look like? Um, like it's a bit difficult to determine whether two matches to A or C, but I can sort of guess that, okay, two and four probably can be paired to either A or C, but I just, right. it's a bit difficult to know which is which. I mean, Correct. it's sort of like um, answering multiple choice questions in which you're eliminating the least likely, um, the least likely. combinations, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's how we but do it's it. A, you know? when, it's a, when you don't it's have a fun, a, you know, fun exercise. Answer, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's a fun exercise. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey. So uh, let me let me go then. I'll I'll, I'll do uh, eleven. Okay. Sure. Okay. So in eleven, let me see what I what I did. Uh, let's see screen. Okay, here we go. Okay. So. Me, let me restart this so we you know we start fresh. <laughs> we don't have any <laughs> anything in the environment, you know, doing doing tricks. Okay, so it says here, right? Okay, it says here. Let me put it a bit more. Okay, uh, it says here. Okay, I use the uh, uh, the AUS uh, underscore livestock data and contains the monthly total number of pig slaughters in Victoria, mm -hmm. Australia from 78 on. Use filter to extract pig slaughters, pig slaughters in Victoria, okay, between 1990 and 1995. Okay, so this is what we have, okay? First, what I did was make sure that I have the animal and I have the state, right? Okay, so I started there. Uh, so I have right now, right? Uh, you know, ju just the just the pigs, just the pigs and the state, the uh, Victoria. Then it says that uh, we have to filter between 1990 and 1995. Okay, so uh, what I did, it can be done differently now that I, you know, that I got a little more savvy with the, you know, with the error that I had in the bricks. Uh, but I did it this way, you know, I did the mutate of the month, okay, as a date. Then I filter, okay, between, you know, the, the parameters, uh, 1990 and then before 1996, and then mutated back to year month. But I realized that now you can extract, you know, from month right away, you can extract the, the you know, the, as date. So you don't you don't need that instruction to mutate uh, as date, but uh, you know some things that you're learning on in the in the journey. Okay, so here we have, and now we have uh, pig slaughter, state Victoria, from 1990 to 1995, at the end of 1995. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're asked right to um, uh, use the autoplot, use the autocorrelation. And then the question is, how do they differ from white noise? And if, if you use a longer period, what difference does it make? Okay, so let's do the plot first, right? Okay, and this is the plot. And as you can see, you know, there's an upward trend. So, you know, already I'm picturing already the ACF, right? That the ACF is going to be or a scallop or something, you know, uh, go, going, going down. Then you see that there's seasonality, right? Okay, so mm -hmm. probably you'll be we will be like a scallop. So let, let let's see let's see what 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 happens. Okay, so this is the the ACF. Okay, and as you can see, okay, we see those you know uh, kind of wedges right you know around in some instances. In some instances, you see a little bit down the trend, but then you go up again and go down and go. Up. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so the first question, uh, why noise? Uh, that refers to chapter 2.0, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, and, and what is a why noise? Why noise in East-West is when, according to the book, is when the 
there is really no autocorrelation. In other words, the autocorrelation is very near zero, right? And you know, you see this pattern that there is some you know dotted lines above zero or between zero, which are the the explanation here is the minus two divided by the square root of the entire right, the entire uh, the entire time time that we are we are we're plotting this. And as you can see in this one, as an example, white noise, the lags they don't uh, pass over, you know, they don't cross those, you know, those uh, let's call them marginal guidelines, you know, whatever they call it. Okay, so going back here, so we have this right, these dotted lines, which are the, you know, the, it's kind of the upper upper limit, lower limit, okay. And we see that definitely the lags are much higher, okay? They're more pronounced than that. So we can say here that there is really, you know, uh, we are not seeing the pattern of white noise, okay? For this type of, uh, of time series. Then the other question is, if we take a longer uh, period, okay? What would happen, you know, to this, you know, to this uh, oral correlation? So what I did was expand the time series from 1990 to 1988. In other words, up two years before, and then from 1995 to 1997, at two years alone. So we are adding four years in total. Okay, so we did the same, you know, the, the, the same filtering. Okay, uh, we do the, the series, and we see, so we see that there's still an upward trend, right? Uh, maybe there's some leveling here, et cetera, but we see that, that trend. And when we plot the ACF, okay, now what we see compared to this one, right? Uh, th this lag was, was around this figure, like point, let's say 0 0.63, 0 0.64. Uh, here, that lag is surpassing 0 0.75. In other words, the lags are getting stronger, <laughs> okay? Uh, and, and the reason is because we have a little more data Okay, is getting you know more regressive you know to to that to that you know point of of, of origin, and we see you know very clearly that you know wedge in some cases some leveling and then some wedge again. So there's some cycle you know somewhere here too. Okay, uh, so that was my you know that was my analysis here. What do you think, Michael? Good. Excellent. Good. Okay. Excellent. Good. <laughs> okay, let me stop the share. Okay. Then I'll mm -hmm. here for number 12. Yes. Okay. So um computing the daily changes in Google closing stock prices. Well, they just uh, gave us the um the code to do this. Mm -hmm. And so this is uh, the code that they uh, gave. And the first question is, so why is it necessary to index the symbol? Because here, as we can see, after selecting for the um, ticker symbol Google and the year date to include at and up after 2018, then so we also have to update the index into the right. trading day, which is basically um, just the number of the row of the filtered data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why is that the case? Because I found that the, all this operation, if we, so after we filter, the, the operation will not update the index. So here, um, okay, so this is just the auto plot. So for the time series plot, of the filtered mm -hmm. data. And as right. we can see here, and on the, at the bottom of the plot, then we can just, we have the trading day, which is um, basically the row number of the newly filtered data. And then, so what would actually happen if I remove the update symbol here, and I don't update the index into the new trade trading day and well, so first of all, I'm sorry mm -hmm. to going back and forth. The, 
the pattern does not change at all. So there's no difference in the appearance of the uh, data. But then, uh, well, as we can see here, it will still use the original uh, date, uh, original index, which is the date. So I'm not entirely sure um, why they are asking this question because, well, if you don't change the index, then it will just use the old index. So, and yeah, I'm not entirely sure what is they are really asking here because there is no error whatsoever. The right. data looks exactly the same and it's just changing, okay, um, the actual date into perhaps um, a sort of more interpretable um, index, which is the trading day, but then I'm not entirely sure. So I'm not entirely sure what they're asking here. Do you? Yeah, what, one of the things that I noticed, you know, when I did this, you know, trying to figure out why they have to do the, you know, use the raw number instead of the date, the thing that I noticed is that there are gaps, okay, in the in, in the date, in the date column. For example, uh, we All know right. that, uh, you know, uh, on the weekends, uh, there's no trading, okay? That's true. And on holidays and all that. So there are gaps in using the date as the index. And that could, you know, that, that could cause uh, uh, some problems, especially when you're calculating that difference. Because if it feels... If the time series feels those missing dates, it's going to give you zero. And that's not entirely yes, correct. Sir. Okay. So I believe that the you know the reason why they wanted to use a continuous, okay, and unique number, which is the raw number in this case, the trading day, is because of that, is to avoid that problem with the gap on the dates. Okay. And I, I've seen it in, in other in other time series, I've seen it that you know. There are gaps between, uh, not necessarily because you know there's no trading. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just relative to these stocks. But for example, if it's a sensor, and the all sensor right, was right. maintained, you know, periodically, so there will be gaps in that, in that, uh, you know, in that time series, and you have to ha know how to deal with it. One of the reasons to deal with, one of the uh, solutions we deal with it is to, you know, just uh, do a reindex. Okay, no use the date, use just a number, a continuous number. The other one, you know, is a little more sophisticated, is impute. Okay, you know, try to interpolate or backfill or forward fill, et cetera, so you can close uh, those gaps. But that's more, you know, that's a little more technical and more, more risky <laughs> yeah. because yeah. You're, you're, you're putting numbers there. Okay, usually what, what I've seen is just, you know, index through a continuous, uh, you know, discrete number. And you have you avoid that. Okay. So that is very helpful because yeah. Yes. And yes. At at first, I yeah there are a little bit differences uh, here and there, but I think I'm just over, um looking into things too much. But yeah, I was figuring right. out okay, yeah, of course we have to update the index, uh, or else the C will will yep. just use the old index, and it's just. Yeah, it didn't occur to me naturally um, that there would be caps um, in the data. Of course, exactly. it is. If, 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 if you is. check, you know, just the first twenty uh, rows, you see that there are some gaps, you know, and yeah. there, there yeah. you know, the weekends. Uh, maybe there was no trading or for some reason, holidays, whatever. Okay, and there's some gaps there, and I believe that that's the reason why they they they, they do the reindex. All right. That's really helpful because I just assume, okay, this is the, um, mm -hmm. like a textbook data set. Maybe it's all good and great to, right. uh, for beginners. So yeah, it just passed my uh, mind completely. Yeah, it's kind of a curveball, you know. You have to look at those, you know, those columns. Yeah. I see, ah, there's some gaps there. Okay. Yeah, which is why I was a bit, okay, why are they asking this question? Okay. Right, right. But you answered it perfectly. I mean, you know, to, to make sure, maybe we can, you know, email uh, Rob, you know. <laughs> hey, Rob, you know, we have this discussion on, you know, this question on chapter two. And, and, we, and we think it's the gap between the days. Is that correct? You know, whatever. He will say, yeah, yeah or maybe not, you know. <laughs>
<laughs> but I, I don't see anything else, you know. Besides that, I don't see anything else on the on the series. The series is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. And the second question is the to plot the differences and their SEF. So here I'm um, using SEF with a diff varying length of legs. So from right. 30, 90, 180, and 365. So just for monthly, quarter, uh, half year, and a year. And if we look at the definition of the uh, white noise that you have shown before, mm -hmm. then yes, there are a bit of spikes that pass the, um, the threshold. Right. But I, I just think that, OK, there's two bars that pass. So, so there are only those two spikes that pass the threshold and only those two. Um, even after lengthening the leg for a year. And I would say to the last question, do the changes in the stock prices look like white noise? Yes, it uh, does look like a white noise. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I agree. And I believe that later uh, we're going to see a, a statistical test on this, okay? I believe it's called the augmented uh, uh test, which gives gives you, you know, uh, a point of reference. You know, it's a it's a it's a, it's a p test, but it's a point of reference to check. You know, if there's there's enough evidence to, you know, uh, uh, you know, to reject the the no hypothesis, which the no hypothesis here is that there is autocorrelation. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, it's a little bit different. So, but yeah, okay. but, but graphically, I agree with you. I mean, they are. There are uh, two lags, two lags that you know surpass that, but everything else is stays within that. So it's pointing that the autocorrelation, is, at least in the most, is very weak. Uh, yeah, and is is something uh, that's what is that's what's challenging about you know forecasting uh, future stock prices, and you know we have seen this just in a couple of yeah. weeks, right? You know the, the the market is crashing, and it's because there are other other uh, features, okay, other components that affect, you know, that stock price, you know, news about the company, uh, economic, uh, you know, sentiment, consumer sentiment, and all that, that are not really, you know, within the time series. Okay, so yeah, that, that's why, in fact, you know, the M6 competition that is, you know, currently going right now, the microdis micro competition, it's about that, it's about stock prices. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, looking at the lack of pattern data, I can sort of understand why stockbrokers oh, yeah. are highly paid. Oh, I yeah, mean, definitely. They're making yeah. something out of this noise, which at yeah. first, okay, what can I see here? Basically nothing. And yeah. That, that, they're trying to build a crystal ball, basically. <laughs> they're trying to build That's a crystal true. ball that gives you, you know, at least 99% of the time, you know, the right answer. And usually that's not the case, you know? There's there's too many too many random you know, uh, you know yeah. things going around, yeah. Uh, but at least you can see that the trend you know in the in the plot you can see that the trend is is yeah. pretty good. Okay, mm -hmm. you know that, that that there's some trend you know there, there could be some trend there. Okay, yeah. Uh, and usually the stock prices you know of of a, of a major company Google company usually you know it tends to go to go up. Okay, if not you know everyone will be fired. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, those are fun. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we have still fifty minutes. <laughs> um. So yeah. So for next week. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me see. Is there anyone willing to present? Oh yeah, well, I put my name. Okay, so okay, yeah, I will be <laughs> <laughs> next week. Is you well, <laughs> now? I remember. Okay, okay. but I'm I'm doing chapter four. That's what I remember. All right. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. So, um, I, I, Michael, if I can ask you, please, can you sure. share that? Uh, you know, that that markdown. Very. Oh nice. yeah, sure. I like sure. it. I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that will be the standard. You know, for this, uh, for for this book. <laughs> we'll see. 
Yeah, because it reminds me of, of Shiny, really. I say, hey, you know, you did a Shiny. Yeah, man, not that great. <laughs> yeah, I think it's based on the uh, Bootstrap name, which I think is used by Bootstrap. Shiny. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, okay. Oh, yeah, I've also tried um, using the time decay and. Um, uh huh. Uh, well, the the packages by Matt Denko, Denko, Denko? Denko how should I yes. pronounce Denko? Okay. Denko, yes. And it is actually quite amazing. I mean, it's very easy to use, and I really like. Um, oh yeah. How how it just uh, give us the smooth of the time series plot uh, without us asking. Well, there are a lot of hand holding, definitely, but I mean, it looks nice, and also very easy to use the interactive uh, plots, especially for, I think, question number nine, in which we was asked, uh, was there any unus unusual year? It's a bit hard. Of course, yeah, there is the ggplotly, in which we can change the ggplot into a plotly um, plot. Mm -hmm. And then we can okay. find, OK, this year looks strange. There is a sudden drop. What year is it? I mean, if we just uh, gaze at the plot, it will take forever to determine it. And yeah, just that interactive to true, then it's very easy to find things. And also, yeah. they have a lot of Agreed. handy features, like find outliers. It's very nice. It's very nice to use. I mean, I thought it would be like an additional mental overhead, no. because you know, adding more packages and packages well, that's my experience with tiny models, but not with this one. I mean, for me, uh, you know, because this is the first time that I kind of, you know, invest time in digging about the time series forecasting theory. Okay. Uh, it's good to learn from, you know, from the basic functions, right? You know, to make sure that you understand, you know, what's going on. But after I finish this, definitely time to cave will be the, the package. Okay, because it has everything. You understand yeah. the foundation. Okay, so if you have any problem, you can go back. Okay, and, and do a little bit of tinkering, you know, with these functions. But time TK gives you gives you basically all. And the good thing is that Matt really strives to make tools that make you more efficient. Okay, that's and true. For example, true. to work in industry. Okay, to in, even even in academia, to work in industry, you have you know uh, due dates. Okay, so for example. Uh, you've been paying six six uh, six figure uh, salaries, right? 120, 130, 150. Your time is gold. So the more productive you are, the more valuable you are. Yeah. And if yeah. you use yeah. tools that really, you know, take you too long, somebody somebody's going to notice, and then you know you're going to be kind of you know you know drifting out of of the, of the organization. So the more efficient you are. You know, in getting insights, uh, you know, getting some valuable actionables, etc. Uh, that, that's what gets the ticket to you know stay in the company and and, and be more valuable. You know, get, get more 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 raises. Yeah, that's true. That, that, that's his that, that that's his pitch really. That's pitch, and I, and I and I believe it because I come from industry. I come from manufacturing. Okay, and manufacturing. You know, if you don't get that product, you know, on time with the quantity and the quality, you're in trouble. OK, you know, th that's always, you know, uh, a dagger, you know, right in your, on the top of your head, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I worked there for 15 years, OK, 15 years mm -hmm. uh, experience. And let me tell you, you know, every day was a, was a new day. <laughs> was a new day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a new day because, you know, problems come and you have to, you know, you have to solve them. <laughs> you, you are expected to solve them. Yeah. And well, the same people thing need stuff science, every day. Yeah. And it's the same thing in data science, you know? They give you this, you know, uh, this problem. Hey, how can we solve it? And you have a week <laughs> to give us the answer. So you better, <laughs> you better have some good insights, you know, and and, and, and and good stuff, you know, to tell. If not, they say, yeah. okay, go, 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 bye, bye. Get, get next, next, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, time TK is a great. And if you want to, you know, keep keep on on time series and model time. Model time is a whole ecosystem built on on tidy models but for forecasting and mm -hmm. I, I have i have done some labs and all that and it's it's good it's good especially for high performance multiple time series 
So, because right now we're seeing the best case, only one, right? Only one time series. What, what about a, a company like Walmart, like Amazon, okay? That has thousands of products, okay? And they have to forecast uh, their, their inventory and their demand because that's where the money is, <laughs> but basically. So you, you need tools for that, okay? For forecasting everything. And maybe this model is not the, the most appropriate for this particular problem, but this one is, you know, how to make that decision. And model time, you know, includes, built-in includes all those uh, mechanisms. So it's, it's good. I mean, Matt, Matt is one of the, the top, top people there. Okay, yeah, top people. Yeah, like when I'm uh, doing the exercise, um, I was thinking, okay, maybe I should change the index to uh, monthly, quarterly, and so on. I mean, changing the intervals. Well, we yeah. have to, with the usual set of packages in this book, we have to set them manually. And well, it's not hard, but of course it takes time. But then I noticed that there are functions in the either time TK or um, yes. Yes. something else maybe that it just gives you all sorts of combinations that you want to have for your seasonality. Okay, you want uh, hour, daily, weekly, monthly. Um, here you go at once. Wow, mm -hmm. that is very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but that, 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 that's, that's productivity, really. That's productivity. Yeah. That you don't have to you know, spend so much time, you're just coding. So just with a, a parameter and you get it, okay? And you know, in, in real life, you know, that's, that's, that's very well. Very well. Okay. Okay. So yeah, um, nothing else to share. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I, I will be waiting for the for the markdown. I will send <laughs> it after this. Okay. Good. Excellent. Excellent. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay then. Uh, well. Do, um, do, do, do you want my email or? I can just share it in the um, in Slack channel. Slack. It's like, okay, okay, fine. Yeah, I have no problem sharing this. I mean, it's not okay, like- sure. No, and, and it's good- A billion stays, dollar document. No, and it stays in the, you know, in the, in, in the log there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Excellent. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, thank you for coming and see you next week. Okay, excellent. Okay. Bye. Bye.